All right, everyone, grab a cup of coffee and get uh, get focused. I want you to learn this. This is pretty important stuff. We're shifting gears from Angular. That doesn't mean I'm done with Angular by any means. I came across this problem in Python, and I thought, while it's fresh in my brain, I'm going to make a video on it. So if you're looking forward to more Angular content, don't worry, it's still coming. Um, but yeah, we're going to talk about list comprehensions in Python, and using them, how do we get every substring from a string easily with them in Python? Maybe not so easily. Maybe it's a little hard to understand at first, but I think once we write it out together, it'll make more sense. And this actually came to me because I was just practicing my Python. Uh, I haven't done this in a while. I've been on HackerRank, and I was going to do a problem, and it's doing something like this, where I have to get every substring of a string, and I didn't really know what to do, so I went ahead and I cheated, and uh, I looked how to do this. I'm like, oh, I didn't know you can even do this in Python. So that's what the, we're going to talk about today. And if you don't care about list comprehensions, maybe you already understand it. You just want to know how to get every substring. I will try to remember or try to figure out timestamps in this video so you can go to that timestamp and just watch that portion. But I, if you don't know them, I do recommend you watching this so you can learn this as well. And if you like this kind of stuff, don't forget to hit subscribe. We're getting close to 1,000. I really do appreciate it. You guys are the best. And uh, I'd love to see us hit 1,000 soon. And I did make a list comprehension video. Let's just check it out real quick a while back. It was one of my first videos ever. And what's kind of funny is I only had 13 subs at the time. So this must have been way back. Look at that, 13 subs. Um, this was back in 2020. And someone was generous enough to comment cheesecake. I really do appreciate all the comments. <laughs> Especially when they're as valuable <laughs> as this. But that's, that's kind of funny. So let's talk about list comprehensions. And why they can be useful, why they're elegant, why they look so fancy fancy schmancy, and that's because they are. So I'm going to have a list, I'm going to call it X, and it's just going to be a bunch of numbers. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 3, blah, 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 let's just add some, and 8, okay? And I'm also going to have a word that, uh, and here it is, I put the code that I was practicing this video with on this tab in case I forget, don't tell anyone. I'm gonna have this word tomorrow, and let's talk about how list comprehensions can be our friend. So maybe we have a problem where we want to take a list of numbers, like X, and we want to make another list of every item in here, its value squared. Right, so one squared would be one, this one would be four, this one would be nine, 16, nine, and we'd make a new list out of those values. How do we do that all in one line of code? Well, you can do that with list comprehensions. And the syntax is, once you see it, you'll get the hang of it, um, but it's a little different right off the bat. So let's call this SQRD, our new list. And the syntax is going to be inside the square braces. And the syntax goes a little like this. It goes expression, so i times i for alias i in x. And let's talk about what this is doing. So the in x part, we're saying in this iterable data type. So it has to be in an iterable data type or this will not work. So a list is iterable. So in x. We're going to go through each value and call it i, just for the sake of things. We could call it something else. This is just arbitrary, so I could call it s, or I could call it multiple letters. Um, it doesn't really matter. But when you do give it an alias, like I did i here, it has to be used in this, this expression, right? We can't just say, oh, s, you know, s times s, and act like it's going to know what we're talking about. In our case, it has to be i times i to get the square as it goes through this list of each item and create a new list of that, okay? And if you're confused, um, W3Schools has the syntax right here, kind of just as I said, they have this optional condition that we're gonna talk about next real quick, um, but this part right here is what we've done. Here's the exp expression, here's the alias is what I call it, they call it an item, and here's the iterable. So let's print this squared, and I'm going to run this. And here you go, we can see our new list. Every single item here is now the squared value of each item in X, right? And we did that all in one line of code. Can you think what the alternative would, would be? Well, you would probably create 
uh, an empty list to start and then you would loop through with a for in loop with x and then you would go through each one and then append and you know there'd be multiple lines involved but here we did it all in one line of code so let's do something a little bit different um, instead of i times i let's say for i and x if i modulus 2 is equal to 0 meaning it's an even number so what this is going to do is it's going to put every single even number in our new list and I'll go ahead and save that and we'll look at this here we go our new list is only consisting of even numbers okay so on to let's get all of the substrings of a string using list comprehensions before that I'm actually going to do it with for loops so you can see the before and after and I'm going to get rid of this line and I guess this line so I just want to make sure that you know that you can get slices of a string by feeding it a range of indices so if I wanted to do word the string word from index 1 to index 3 and then print that out what would that look like so let's run that and it would just be om. Um. So we can see it starts at index 1, which would be this O, and it ends at index 3, but does not include index 3. And that's going to be important. So how would we, how would we go through and get every substring in a string with just four loops? Well, we could do something like this. For i in range of the length of word. So what this is going to do, it's going to start at 0 and end at the index of w. Okay, and then we're going to have another loop inside of this loop, and we could say for j in range of i plus 1 to length of word plus 1. So now j is always going to start at one higher indice, then i, and it's going to end at one end to see past the end of the string. So pretend there's like a space here. It'll end at the spaces end to see rather than the last letter. Okay, and then I'll just add a colon and let's just print out word from range i to j. So let's kind of go through what this is doing. So, so this range is going to start at zero. So we can say word from zero to 1 would be the very first one because j is going to start at i plus 1 and end, like I said, at the index past the last letter. So we should just get t, right? So i is going to continue to be 0 until we go through all of j and then it will increment up by 1. So in the second round, it's going to be 0. i is still 0, but j is going to increment up 1. And now it's going to be index 3. So index 3 is actually m, but remember, it doesn't include the last index, so we're going to get to, and then so on and so forth. So if I print this out, and I run this, here we can see all it going through. Um, let me scroll up a little bit. Starts at t, to, tom, tomo, and you can see that it actually prints out tomorrow right here, and not just this because of the fact that we did length of word plus one. If we ended up not doing this, this plus one, it would end at this part right here. It would forget the W. Okay, so that is how you can actually get every substring of a string with for loops. But maybe you wanna be fancy, and maybe you wanna use list comprehensions to do what this is doing. So I'm gonna keep this up. So let's go down a bit, and I'm going to name this list comp for our new list that we're going to use list comprehensions to do what we just did with these for loops. And I'm going to say, here's our expression, word from range i to j for i in range of length of word. So this is our outer for loop. And what we can do is we can actually add another for loop after this in our list comprehension to have multiple multiple loops. So the first one's going to be our outer, and then our second one is going to actually be our inner loop or the J loop right here. So then we could say for J in range, and then the same thing we did right here, I plus one 
plus one to length of word plus uh, plus ones on the outside of that plus one like this and this is wordy this is a bit uncomfortable to read that's why I didn't understand this at first but when I wrote it out like this it made more sense than just looking at it like this but here what you need to know is this is the outer loop and then after that comes the inner loop and then this is the same old expression um, that we were seeing when we were doing I squared we're just grabbing the word from I to J and let's watch uh, the output of this so we're going to print list comp and I'm actually going to comment out this print so we don't see that anymore and I'm going to put pass so we don't get an error in this for loop so let me clear down here and now I'll go ahead and run this and here we have a list of every single substring of this particular string. Of course, you can use other strings other than tomorrow. That's just the string I chose to use. If you use the longer string, you're obviously going to have more substrings. So that's a little bit about list comprehensions. And then we just turned it up to 100 and did a list comprehension with two loops. So if you followed along and you understood every single part of that, congratulations. You're most likely a genius. And uh, this took a second for me to realize what the heck is even going on here. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Hope it was useful. And if you ever come across the same kind of problem, maybe you can use this uh, in the future or something similar to this. So thanks for watching. Really appreciate it. Don't forget to hit subscribe if you like this. And hope to see you in the future.